I'm going to begin this podcast as humbly as I know how. Beginning June 2nd, 2023, it is over for you hoes. Now, I say that in the most humblest way possible because on June 2nd, Street Fighter 6 is coming to the streets and fighting season is here. Fighting game season is here. And I just want to make sure it is well known that my game tag is Nix underscore D-Y-S-G. That is N-I-X underscore D-Y-S-G. And that's on PSN, PlayStation Network. Come see me on the 5. If you think you ready, I promise you, you not ready, okay? And don't think this is going to be some situation where you're my Adonis Creed to my Diamond Dame. No, 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 no. I'm heading out smoke and L's all summer 23. Come see me. Play with the boy if you want to, okay? Challenge him, all right? And make sure your people is there because you will get embarrassed. And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? D-Y-S-G, keep it real, that's key, we the best OGs, dope topics, come see, D-Y-S-G, keep it real, that's key, we the best OGs, dope topics, come see. I got a question, do you speak geek? Yeah. New episodes on the podcast dropping each uh-huh. week. Get hip to the game. I'm giving y'all a sneak peek. Yeah. Flavor for your ears. Bars flowing on unique beats. Sheesh. Blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks. The source wall wins. They dropping comics. You should cop. I think you don't appeal. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on Dono and Nick's. They preaching the gospel. Real ish, ill like mono. They sick. Right. Thumb life if you're into games with combos and kicks. This podcast is a gift. It's as real as it gets. Yeah. Blurs taking over. We're clever marketing. We gain exposure. Feeding the community magic. Your boy's a nerd promoter. The dialogue is Jimmy Crack. Corn, we aiming for gold. The truth was told. I can't speak for other platforms. Uh-huh. Sharp as cats out like knives, claws, and tack thorns. Yeah. We blacking out, going crazy like a black storm. DYSG, don't forget to follow back. Hosting on the airwaves, always keeping it a stack. Flowers to my haters, psych. I ain't giving y'all jack. Number one on the charts, give your boy a gold plaque. I don't want peace. I want problems always. Yeah, that's the kind of vibe I'm on. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Nick's. Welcome to the podcast. This is episode 146. Man, I've been cracking at this thing for a while. But for all of y'all who have been rocking with me, rolling with me thus far, I appreciate every single one of you all for listening. But if you are new here, welcome to Do You Speak Geek? This is the podcast. We bring you all the latest and greatest inside of the geek realm as far as news and reviews. Shout out to Spreaker. That's the home team. But wherever you get your podcast, please be sure to search for Do You Speak Geek and hit that subscribe. And while you're at it, follow us on all social media platforms. Facebook at DYSGFB. Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets. Twitch at DYSG underscore games and Instagram and TikTok at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel, the only place you can find the Donald and Daddy show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave comments. We want to know what you guys think. Sorry we skipped First Friday Fights back in, uh, I think, this past month here. But we're going to definitely bring you all a new one. Don't uh, don't fret. We're going to bring you all some more content. We also have a new casting call coming up soon. I'm going to keep a little tight lip on that. And some other content coming soon as well. So we'll keep a lookout on the YouTube channel. I promise y'all we're bringing you more content there. And we definitely will deliver because I keep my promises. All right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop to the podcast. Y'all know what we do about this time, people. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? 
Okay, we got the reviews coming at you rapid fire. Only a few of them. Scream 6 doesn't achieve perfection, but by highlighting the newly dubbed Core 4, hitting all the right emotional beats and dialogue, the brutality went up to 11 and comes dang close. So it's a dope film. Please check it out. Attack on Titan final season, the final chapters, special one. Damn, this thing is long. AOT returns with the penultimate part of its final season to remind us why this anime became the global sensation it is. The animation, story, themes, emotion, and the characters all reach their highest potential. Y'all, Jesus Christ, this is a, this is phenomenal. And finally, we have 65, a decent film about fatherhood and dinosaurs that leans on prehistoric survival thrills and sometimes too simple story that begs for a bit more meat on the bones. I guess it got stripped by a pre, uh, prehistoric dinosaur, a T-Rex, or a raptor, or something, but I don't know. Uh, check that one out, and anything else you see this coming up week, y'all. And for now, let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week. We got Superman Lost, number one. Superman's Odyssey of Solitude. After Superman is called away on a routine Justice League mission, Lois Lane awakens to find a complete stranger standing in her living room. The Man of Steel home much sooner than expected, reveals he has in fact been lost in space for 20 years. Nothing and no one seem familiar to him anymore, and the timeless bond between them has been severed, or has it? Can love conquer all? Superman's 85th anniversary celebration continues with this all-new blockbuster 10-issue self-contained series from the creators of the Eisner nominated Deathstroke series. This one's going to slap y'all. Please, please check this main series out. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. 20 years been gone. Damn. Might be interesting. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the last Ronin, the lost years. Number two in the past, Michelangelo has mastered his first fighting form and has overcome his first gladiatorial challenge in Japan. With Master Splinter's journal in his hands and a burning desire for vengeance in his heart, Michelangelo resumes his westward trek across Asia and Europe in order to test his skills against his next deadly opponent. If he's to have any chance of attaining victory in the final battle royal, Michelangelo will have to master an essential new martial arts skill or die trying. Only then can he return to New York City to confront the Foot Clan. Thing is, he's not alone. His dead brothers have joined him on the quest, and they won't shut up. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the present, a.k.a. our future, Casey Marie Jones also follows the sage teachings in Master Splinter's journal as she continues her own journey as master and sensei to the next generation of turtles. Writer Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz alongside Ben Bishop bring us the next exciting chapter from the Roninverse. Man, this is a good series. Check this one out, y'all, for real. Bishop, War College number two. Bishop faces off against the X-Men? What's a Bishop story without time travel? Shunned to a strange future, Lucas discovers familiar faces who will permanently alter his worldview. Meanwhile, his students are in danger, and not just of failing his course. Helped by shocked allies, the anti-mutant organization or Orcus has finally found a way onto Krakoa. Is this the end of the island? Nah, they got it. They got it. A new series, No One, number one. Ten months ago, the Richard Rowe murders shocked the city of Pittsburgh. In the months since, the killings have sparked a dangerous political movement, copycat killers, and a mass vigilante who's still determined to hold the powerful accountable. Not a symbol, not a hero. They could be anyone. They're 
no one. Superstar writers Kyle Higgins and Brian Bocello are, and rising star Gerald Borgs bring you the oversized first chapter of a true crime superhero drama in its own corner of the Massiverse. Oh my God. Mm. And this story continues in Who Is No One, a monthly companion podcast starring Rachel Lee Cook and Patton Oswalt. Yo, that's fire, yo. A companion podcast with a comic book and it's in the Massiverse? Come on, y'all. You, you know I'm in. You know I'm in. And finally, we have Immortal X, Immoral X-Men number two. Hail the Pax Krakoa or perish. But to this hell age is born a hero. Say hello again to Rasputin the fourth. But what can one good chimera do in a universe of sin? The first century of Sinister's plan has come to an end. And whether it's better or worse may depend on the symbol on your forehead. Damn. Mm. <laughs> this has turned out to be a crazy, crazy story with this sense of Sinister, man. Yo, be sure to pick those up and many others this week at your local comic book store. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, peeps, let's hop into some news here. My homie, John Bernthal, to return as the Punisher. As reported by The Hollywood Reporter, Bernthal's Punisher will join Charlie Cox's Daredevil and Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin in the upcoming Disney Plus series. Bernthal first appeared as the character in Season 2 of Netflix's original Daredevil series. He also starred in his own Netflix series called The Punisher from 2017 to 2019. Frank Castle earns the name The Punisher after killing those responsible for the death of his family. In the original show, Daredevil helps Frank fake his death, paving the way for his own adventures in the Punisher spinoff series. Now, fans will get to see the character once again in Daredevil Born Again, which is set for an 18-episode season. The show won't pick up exactly where the original series left off, as Cox has described the series instead of doing the show again in a new way. The star also said Born Again could be slightly tonal dif different from the original. The show is set to air on Disney Plus starting spring 2024. I, for one, am definitely excited that we're going to get the Punisher back. But I am a little leery about the slightly tonal being different, like the tone of the show being a little different. I mean, of course, we have to expect Disney to put their smell on this. I really hope they don't take the volume from 10 down to 2. If you take it from 10 down to like 7, I'll be okay. But don't just water this whole damn thing down. The Punisher is expected to be killing people maliciously and viciously and indiscriminately just because they're criminals. And I expect that from the Punisher. And I need to see that. So if he's going to be using like rubber bullets and unlethal means, just keep it. Alright Disney, hope you're listening. I hope you're listening, Feige, okay? Feige, if you're listening, give me Punisher for real, for real, all right? Speaking of Feige, the film he had with Patty Jenkins, Star Wars film, rather, is no longer going to happen. <laughs> so according to a report in Variety, Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron movie is no longer in active development after previously being pulled from its schedule from 2023 of December. Additionally, a Star Wars movie produced by Marvel Studios mastermind Kevin Feige is also no longer in development. But another project is apparently moving along, a previously announced movie from director Takiti Watiti. According to the report, he's also looking to play a role in the live-action Star Wars film he's been developing. I don't like the trade-off. I would much rather see a Patty Jenkins and Kevin Feige film than a movie from the guy who made Thor 4. But that's just me moving on. <laughs> TMNT Mutant Mayhem. The star-studded voice cast of Seth Rogen's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem has been revealed. And it includes Paul Rudd, Rose Byron, John Cena, Jackie Chan, Ice Cube, Maya Rudolph, 
Hannibal Barris, Giancarlo Esposito, Post Malone, and more. The voice casting news for Teenage Mutant Turtles Meet Mayhem was revealed at Nickelodeon's Kid Choice Awards, and Rogan also shared a teaser trailer for the film, which is set to be released in theaters on August 4th, 2023. Hey, that's my anniversary with my wife, KB. Hey, baby. The trailer sees the beloved half-shell heroes rise up from the sewers and straight onto the streets of New York City as they set out on another adventure that unfolds like a comic book story with a sketchy animation style similar to 2018 Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse. In addition to the teaser, a new poster also rolled out featuring a skateboard etched with various stamp and stickers. I, for one, like this. Two things I love about this whole movie so far. Actually, three. One, the voice casting is phenomenal. Two, the fact that the voices of the turtles are actually teenagers. I didn't get their names, but they're actually teenagers. And I love that they, they kept that authenticity because, of course, they're teenage mutant turtles. So they should sound like teenagers. And the fact that we're getting a comic accurate April O'Neil. Because if y'all know, if you do your homework, if, you, if, you, if you've been doing the education, April O'Neil was supposed to be a biracial woman. When the 90s cartoon came out, they whitewashed the shit out of her. And she was whitewashed for years afterwards. So I like that we're finally getting the authenticity back in Turtles. They sound like teenagers. April O'Neil isn't just some light mayonnaise <laughs> You know, whatever, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we're getting back to the, the heart of things. Let's go. I like it. So the Batman Kate Crusader series has found a new home. Since being canceled by Warner Bros. Discovery as a cost-cutting measure, the animated DC show Batman Kate Crusader has been reportedly picked up for two seasons by Amazon. The show, which is produced by J.J. Abrams, Matt Reeves, and Bruce Timm, was announced last year and originally headed for HBO Max before being cut. Now, after talks with Netflix, Apple, and Hulu, The Dark Knight has apparently found its home alongside The Lord of the Rings, Ring of Power, and Amazon. Kate Crusader not only reunites J.J. Abrams and Matt Reeves, who previously created Felicity together, but also counts Ed Brubaker among its creatives, whose previous work includes numerous, numerous incarnations of Batman in the comic books. Yo! I'm so glad we finally get in this series. After talking about it, I think it was the last fandom they mentioned it, where it's kind of it's gonna be like the seasons are gonna show his evolution of Batman. I can't wait to see this. This is gonna be fire. And plus, I mean, come on now, it's Bruce Tim, the 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 goaded Bruce Tim, who gave us Batman the animated series, which in my opinion is the greatest animated series of all time. Come on now, you can't ask much more than that. Let's go. And finally, we have news on Beetlejuice 2. Wednesday star Jenna Ortega, who is now, to me, Hollywood's new it girl, is reportedly in negotiations for a role in Tim Burton's Beetlejuice 2. The publication source claims Ortega is being sought to star as the daughter of Winona Ryder's Lydia from the 1988 original. It's also claimed that production on a long gestated sequel is planning on beginning in May or June of this year. With Tim Burton expected to helm and Michael Keaton set to return, Warner Brothers and Ortega's uh, representatives have not commented on the report so far from The Hollywood Reporter. Simple story. It could work as long as it's just as hilarious as the first one. I have no problem with it at all. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and hop into some life. Peace, love, and video games. That man is playing Galaga. All right, you gamers. Now, as I already said at the top of this podcast, it's fighting game season. And y'all, this one, when it dropped on our heads this past week, none of us could believe it. But it is true. Bandai Namco has announced the return 
of the Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi series, over 15 years after the franchise's last mainline entry. Revealed over the weekend at the Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour 2023, a brief teaser trailer confirmed that the new game is in development. It doesn't have a title, confirmed platforms, or release window yet, as the trailer simply said, a new sparking begins. Dragon Ball Z Sparking is the name of the Budokai franchise in Japan. There's also an English version of the trailer from a live stream that hasn't been officially uploaded yet, and it says a new Budokai Tenkaichi begins. There's a Japanese version of the trailer that's online. You can check out for yourselves. But, (laughs) y'all, Tenkaichi is back. I remember playing the first Dragon Ball Z Budokai on PS2. And the fact that we are now this far in the evolution of Dragon Ball games, and now we have Tenkaichi 4, can you imagine the possibilities of what that's going to look like on next-gen systems? Fam, like I said, fighting game season is back, and I'm loving every minute of this. I'm loving it. FIFA 23 gets National Women's Soccer League teams. Now, EA announced that it's partnering with the National Women's Soccer League, the NWSL, to bring all 12 teams in the league to FIFA 23. It is coming to all platforms on March 15th. The the NWSL's integration into EA Sports FIFA 23 is a monumental milestone for the league, the players, and millions of football fans around the world as we continue pushing boundaries for the women's game. That's beautiful. I like that they're doing this. Let's go ahead and make this officially the thing from now on. Yeah, football, soccer, whatever you want to call it, let's go. I like this idea. And I know my son Donald loves it. I know Donald loves it because he's a big, big soccer fan. Can't give him a shit about it. And the last piece of news we have, y'all, is the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game has been delayed again. According to a report from Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, Warner Brothers has delayed the game from its May 26th release date. This comes after fan backlash from the gameplay shown in Sony's most recent state of play. However, as Schreier noted, delays like this are mainly for polish rather than overhauling the gameplay elements fans weren't fond of in last month's reveal. Now, yeah, I, I kind of see what they meant by that because if you've seen the gameplay trailer and as aptly put as a reviewer, I saw this say, it just kind of looks like Rocksteady is chasing the Fortnite bag. If you look at it and how it's designed and how it looks and even how it plays, yeah, they're just chasing that bag that for you know the online transactions and i mean it's it's on it's an online only game y'all like you have to have internet connection to play this game there is no campaign on disc only you have to be connected to a network to play this game and they're just i feel like they're they're chasing that fortnite bag they're chasing that apex bag you know what i mean so I don't know. I mean, this is the studio that gave us the Batman series. Who not? I mean, they showed us that a Superman, get, a superhero game, can not only be done well, but done damn near flawlessly. I just don't know what they're doing over there at Rocksteady. But we'll see what happens when the game comes out. Hopefully, it'll slap. And uh, yeah, we'll just see what happens when it finally drops. But that is the pod, people. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to listen to this podcast. Subscribe to this podcast. Let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. Check out the YouTube channel. Like, subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?